I'm getting 450 watts from the pool fan system. It's not the not the greatest, I must say. Yeah, uh, six and a half amps into the battery, 1.5 into the load. This is all we get. Yeah, uh, 7.8 amps. I mean, this is a 1.1 kilowatt system, right? What we have set up there. But I must admit, um, these panels they are these are the worst ones I have actually. When we set this up last year. All the other solar panels were still on the roof here. These were all used panels, right? We had them all mounted on the roof and these were the ones I didn't use on the roof. 190 watt panels, so I didn't bother putting them on the roof anymore. So we set them up here for winter time as the pool fan system and it worked great. Six to seven kilowatt hours a day. So that wasn't too bad actually. But uh, now in these conditions, I mean, it's always sunny. Yeah, the other system pumps like six, seven, eight kilowatt or something. Yeah, seven, seven point three kilowatt, and this one does um, one hundred seventy, one hundred seventy-seven watts. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, first of all, welcome back to another video here from the Offcut Garage in sunny hot Australia. You just saw we have six and a half amps outside, so not the greatest. And I want to use this bed calibration center battery a bit more now, but um, we need more solar for that. Otherwise the battery is discharged to 80% and it takes like three days or so to recharge it to 100. Let's have a look in stock, what kind of solar panels we actually have here. So this would be my preferred ones to set up actually, the 250 watt Rene solar We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six. And there is another six behind the um, pool fence. So we've got 12 of them. Then we've got our, no, we don't want to use these ones with the cracks anymore. This is the one which burned out actually here. There's a burn mark. It still works. Canadian solar, we don't want to use them anymore. Then we have the BLD, 250 watts. They are pretty good, actually. I consider these ones the best ones I have. They deliver the best performance. And then we have the Sharp, 215 watt panels. Six of them as well. Now we've got seven of them, actually. There was seven. And these are the 190, 190 watt panels we have started with zero volts on all strings. See, we have opened the junction box here and measured all these strings. None of them produces any power. Wow. Yeah, and as you can see, I've got heaps of them. They should have all, most of them should have writings on it, how much power they actually deliver in full sunlight. I checked them all with the um, solar panel tester. So I think we should go with the Rene Solar here, the 250 watt panels and set up another six of them. I'll take these ones back in stock here and we set up the other ones next to the fence over there. Gives us a bit more power. Um, let's see, let's try it. We can only try, right? So I was thinking because, oh, I'll show you here on the, on the label actually, because they have a um, open circuit voltage of 37.4 volts, right? If I can put four of them in series and we still stay under 150 volts then, because um, 37.4 times four, that should be like, um, that's, a, that's 100, 149.5 volts or something then. So it's actually under the 150 volt this solar charge controller can do. But the, but the Victron MPPT calculator online, um, tells me I can use only three of them because in very cold weather these can produce more power, more more voltage and then it could damage the solar charge controller. Well, I don't know. Do you think we have cold weather here somehow? Does it look like cold weather? I mean, we've got still one month to go in summer here and then we've got autumn and then we've got winter but even then we are talking about five degrees maximum or minimum temperature in the morning so i'm not sure if we actually exceed the voltage then we could try 
and measure in winter time how much voltage they actually produce in the morning when it's the coldest here in sunny hot Australia. But let's remove these ones first, mow the lawn and then set up the other six panels over there. Gives us a bit more power. When the, um, when the kids were here for Christmas, they asked me, Hey Dad, do you reckon you've got enough solar panels now? And I said, Well son, listen, whatever happens in life, you can never have enough solar. So uh, take this advice from your dad for life. Man, we haven't touched these panels here for a while. Just tested them last year and that's it. Since then, they are sitting here against the fence. So it's good to get finally some usage out of them. They are a lot heavier than the other ones. So I have just realized that um, some of the plugs are still missing here. The MC4 plugs, they are two female. And here are two males missing. Well, no big deal. Claire bought a pack of 100 each last year when we did all the do-it-yourself solar. Ah, see, I mixed this up. These are the wrong ones. The, the female plastic part, they're getting the male with metal contact. So these belong in there. And the female contact goes into the male plastic part. Doesn't that make sense? I think MC4 is the worst connector ever. I don't know who came up with this shit, but this is just insane. It says there are minus on the cable. All right, no big deal. Just pop them in. And make sure you're putting this metal part correctly into the crimper. See on this claw you've got this bottom part and this upper part looks like a heart and the actual contact needs to go in like this so that it folds. See when I press this see how the top part folds and put the cable in and then crimp it it puts these two wings here into the wire for very good contact. Okay, and then use the plastic part, tighten the nut so it's all watertight and that's it, done. Here, yeah, this is in better light condition now. Don't put the pin this way around, put it that way around. When you close the claw, it pushes these two metal wings up and see how this is like a, like a heart shape there. It has this little notch in the middle. This is actually there for reversing the wings so they're folding back downwards. So when I push this down, see how they bend? And then they're coming back down onto the wire. There. I've already connected one of the strings now and I just want to check the polarity here make sure this is all good on the circuit breaker incoming see this is negative negative 96 volts now it shouldn't be negative this is the red one here this is the positive this is the negative now just check the cabling down here so positive on this side negative on this side but my one is other the other way around for some reason. Uh, okay, let's uh, check this again behind the fence. <laughs> yep, I had it mixed up here. Now it should be fine, but uh, measure again. 
just measure twice don't want to destroy your solar charge controller yep I had it mixed up here now it should be fine but uh, measure again just measure twice don't want to destroy your solar charge controller okay let's measure again yeah that looks better See, now it's positive 97 volts glad I checked this okay shall we turn it on okay yeah, I can see already 70 80 100 160 180 180 watts coming in from one string 190 200 do we see 200 come on okay it's going up and down it's looking for the maximum power point now okay I'll connect the other string in the meantime Okay, so both strings are connected. 360. Well, it's it's cloudy. I cannot do anything about the weather, you know. I can only put up more solar. And the sun is already that far west. It's not easy to win. So that's now a bit of a solar upgrade. Uh, 250 each. Uh, 1.5. 1 1.5 kilowatts. That is against the pool fence. Yes, all the panels have been secured to the fence. So in case of the storm or something, everything is secured. It's, it's still a temporary setup for a couple of days only. Okay guys, I guess that's it for today with a little um, solar upgrade for our pool fence system. Looks amazing, right? I'm keen to find out if my wife actually noticed. They are a lot larger. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks for buying me a beer. Your generous donations allow me to make these videos here and buy me a beer from time to time to keep me cool here in sunny hot Australia. <laughs> Until the next video guys, you stay charged, stay safe and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Uh, don't forget to um, don't forget to watch the SPED calibration center here on the VIM. I'll link this down below. So you can see our amps coming in now, hopefully. <laughs>